On this channel, we've explored many dark things. And the case we're looking at today really does beg the question, are there demonic forces in this world? And can they cause human beings to commit horrific acts of evil? And that was the question that was brought to the forefront of the infamous The Devil Made Me Do It case. And today we're going to be looking at the real life story behind the latest Conjuring movie. Now, let us discover the unexplained. Sweat beaded on Arn Johnson's brow as he sat beside his lawyer. The courtroom around him bustled with people, both local and national. His case had attracted a lot of attention, as it was the very first murder in the entire history of Brookfield, Connecticut. However, this was not the source of the media spectacle. Rather, it was the peculiar nature of the defense's claim of innocence. Namely, that Arn had been possessed when he stabbed his landlord five times and left him to die. But how could such events have taken place? What series of happenings drove a seemingly ordinary man to murder? To answer this, we will have to retrace the steps of the accused and discover the truth for ourselves. Debbie Glatzel carried cleaning equipment into her new house, followed by her boyfriend Arn and 11-year-old brother David. Eager to be finished with the move, they cleaned out the home as quickly as they could. David explored his room and noticed a feeling of unease crawl up his spine. Shrugging the feeling off, he began to slowly grab his things, when suddenly the apparition of an old man appeared before him and shoved him. The man warned David that he would hurt all of them if they moved in, and let out an unholy scream before vanishing into thin air. David rushed to inform his sister, but Arn and Debbie brushed off his concerns as an excuse to get out of his cleaning. This, however, would not be the last time David would see the entity. Strange activity continued after the family moved in. Though frightening noises emerged from the attic at night, most of the phenomena centered around David. The boy experienced regular visions of the old man, appearing as a demonic monster which threatened to steal his soul. David suffered horrific night terrors and found his body covered in unexplained scratches and bruises. Attempting to rid themselves of the evil that was now plaguing them, they hired a Catholic priest to bless the house. However, this only seemed to anger the paranormal forces within the home. The family finally admitted that their residence was evil and moved in with Debbie's mother. And as time went on, the devilry only continued to escalate as David began to change for the worse. Twelve days after the ordeal, they called upon the services of world-renowned demonologist Ed and Lorraine Warren. The Warrens had made a name for themselves, investigating high-profile hauntings such as the Amityville House and the Einfield Poltergeist. During the investigation, Lorraine witnessed a black mist materialize next to David. Debbie told the Warrens that they had seen David crumple and choke beneath the blows of invisible hands with red marks appearing upon his body. David's behavior consisted of growling, hissing, speaking in tongues, and reciting passages from the Bible. The Warrens declared that David was in fact possessed, and three lesser exorcisms were performed upon the boy, during which Lorraine claimed he levitated. As the exorcisms continued, 
Arn taunted the demon within the boy to possess him instead. The Warren stopped him and warned him not to challenge the demon. And after this incident, Arn returned to the rental property where he investigated a well where the demon was said to lurk. He supposedly made eye contact with the demon and blacked out. Deciding it would be best for Debbie and Arn to leave, the couple moved out of her mother's house and began renting an apartment. Their landlord, Alan Bono, also hired Debbie as a dog groomer. After settling in, Arn started to behave in a manner just like David. He would fall into trances where he would growl and hallucinate, but would later have no memory of it. On February 16, 1981, Arm called in sick to work and joined Debbie at her work along with her sister Wanda and Debbie's nine-year-old cousin Mary. Bono decided to treat them all to lunch at a local bar and proceeded to get inebriated. After lunch, the group returned to the kennel where Bono became angry. He grabbed a hold of Mary and refused to let go of her. Arn told Bono to release her. Mary ran and Debbie and Wanda attempted to stop the conflict. Arn began to growl and pulled out his pocket knife where he proceeded to stab Bono five times, one of which stretched from his stomach to the base of his heart. Arn then ran from the scene and was eventually apprehended by police. Bono would later die of his wounds. The next day, Lorraine informed the Brookfield police that Johnson was possessed at the time of the murder. Not long afterwards, international media soon blew up the story with sensational reporting. Martin Manila, Arn's lawyer, received calls from all over the world about the trial. Martin traveled to England to meet with other lawyers who had been involved in cases similar to his own. However, they had never gone to trial. He threatened to subpoena the priests who oversaw David Glatzel's exorcism if they did not cooperate with legal defense. The trial began on October 28th of 1981. Manila attempted to submit a plea of not guilty by demonic possession, but the judge, Robert Callahan, rejected the defense. He argued that no such defense could ever be used and would be unscientific to allow testimony. Manila decided to opt for self-defense instead, and as a result, the jury could not legally consider possession as an explanation for the murder. The jury deliberated for three days before convicting Johnson on November 24, 1981, of first-degree manslaughter. He was sentenced to 10 to 20 years in prison, but he would ultimately only serve five years. The story has long been the topic of controversy and the inspiration for countless books, movies, and TV shows. In 1983, Lorraine Warren helped writer Gerard Brittle publish a book about the events called The Devil in Connecticut. Lorraine said the profits from the book were paid to the family and it was in fact confirmed that $2,000 was given by the publisher. However, David and his brother Carl Glatzel sued the authors and book publishers for violating their right to privacy. They argued they depicted Arne as the villain of the story and exploited their brother's mental illness. According to Carl, he claimed the publicity forced him to drop out of school, lose friends, and business opportunities. Lorraine Warren defended her work, saying the six priests involved in the case agreed that the boy was possessed and the paranormal phenomena was real. Arn and Debbie eventually married and support the Warrens' account of demonic possession. And ultimately, the story remains embedded in the public consciousness and received another adaptation in the form of The Conjuring 3 in 2021. Debbie maintains an interest in the supernatural and claims that Arn's biggest mistake was challenging the demon that possessed David. You'll never take that step, she said. You never challenge the devil. But what is the truth? Was there really demonic possession involved? Let us know down in the comments below. 
this has been Cody here at Mystery Archives. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch, and I hope you'll join us next time as we continue to discover the unexplained.